Children are a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward, Psalm 127.3 says. And the psalmist says, you knit me in my mother's womb, in Psalm 139. And Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. The most exciting thing for me of the night of this gala was there was a table in which three women who in our pro-life ministry the year before had decided to keep their babies. And um, they were just delighted to show me the pictures of their children. They're so happy. And seeing women inspired to keep their babies by the genuine care and help of the people of God, that hit me. That genuine love and care that rescues women that are terrorized by fear from the propaganda of an unscrupulous abortion industry. This is what we are all about. We are humbled that we are the first church that Save the Storks has allowed to acquire one of their medical units and move forward. And we were told, you know, good luck finding an ultrasound technician, good luck finding a medical director. And the Lord has given us abundance of all of those because of a dedicated group of people. We have joyous examples of those who've kept their babies by hearing and seeing their very own baby in the womb. And this is far more effective than any force of law. This is the greatest evangelical outreach in the history of America. And I wish pastors could see that. I didn't see that for a while because of the rancor and the way that pro-life was being used by people that were just mean-spirited in many ways. They didn't really care about the souls. They just wanted to just get those babies saved without understanding the bigger picture. But I had to rethink everything about pro-life and how I see it now as a pastor and why I want other pastors to wake up and churches to wake up because the word on the street is, churches are not involved in pro-life. I want that to change. And there's a generation of Americans that are hiding those dirty little secrets of abortion and they need rescuing. And I really believe that once we start helping them come to grips with that and with a love and a grace because it's the grace of God that changes our life, it's its kindness our sin is completely forgiven in his blood. When we get that message out, we have an army of people touched by God that will rescue the next generation facing these decisions. And they'll see right through the false science and rhetoric of these organizations that are just out to make money on abortion.